So, okay, we'll continue our, <coughs> our discussion uh, on that publication and maybe take a, I mean, continue our example last time and then I maybe do a couple more examples on that pop. So, um, I guess we have a pretty massive example, like uh, I can, I think I have this here also. Uh, let's see, where is that? Maybe, yeah, something like that, right? If you remember, we, we have e e essentially just a linear layer. We have x input, have the weight here, multiply, get a q here, and then I will compute the um, L2 long. Oh, sorry, um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I'm just computing the L2 long for that. And uh, I want to look at the, uh, basically the gradient uh, with respect to all the variables here. And then uh, I guess we kind of uh, end up trying to find the parcel, I, I don't know, I probably should give a name for this. Uh, uh, maybe I just call this L also. Wait a sec, this, this pen is too thick. So, so maybe I call this also L. Then we want to find as a parcel W, parcel L. Oh, sorry, parcel L, parcel W. I mean. So assume that like, you have like uh, the <coughs> kind of, uh, the gradient information passing back like from this L2 to this uh, multiply op operator here. Maybe I have this puzzle L, uh, puzzle Q. Oh, I'm sorry, like, I'm really not thinking my brain is not exactly working. This should not be puzzle L, puzzle W. So what I mean is like, here is the local derivative, right? So the derivative of the output refers back to the input here. So then if I have a gradient passing from L2, like passing back to this uh, multiply multiplication operator here, then uh, my gradient can multiply by this kind of local gradient, or actually it's a Jacobian matrix, uh, and pass back to here, right? So, uh, we were asking like earlier, like what should be let's say part this one, puzzle Q, puzzle L, puzzle W. So <coughs> we we kind of ask what's the dimension first. Like if we look at the dimension of each of these things here, W is like two by two, right? X is two by one, so Q is two by one as well. Uh, so it's like two by one, so something something like that. Um. Uh, I guess I um. So, first of all, if you think of in terms of a uh, Jacobian, so the number of inputs here is four, a eh? number of outputs here is two. So therefore, the Jacobian matrix should have size a like, four by two or some something like eight elements. Uh, honestly, I think it's easier to think of that this way. Um, you think of like this <coughs> when you have like. Uh, an input like going into an operator, you have multiple output, you can think of like each of the output separately. And think of the contribution for each of the output, uh, it will give you a local gradient, right? And the shape of that local gradient has to fit with the shape of that input, right? So for example here, Let's say I have Q, let me see if I continue to go like, I have Q like this here, Q is equal to that. So if I look at, okay, maybe I call this Q1 and this is Q2 here. So if I just look at like, what is the partial derivative of Q1 with respect to W, what's the shape for that?
Mm, how, how many elements inside this uh, parcel Q and parcel W? Q. Okay. No. So, okay, if I just look at one one output here, then essentially you have like four input and one output, right? Then the Jacobian size would be like four by one, would be just have four elements there, right? But uh, another way to think of that is like, if you have only one output here, um, you actually have a scalar function, right? If I just look at Q1 here, this is just a scalar function, right? In terms of Q1, it's just a scalar function, right? For scalar function, we can talk about gradient, right? And the sh shape of the gradient is the same as the shape of the input, right? Because think of that, like, we, um, we, the gradient is basically uh, describing the direction of steepest ascent and remember that if we want to get a steepest descent update we'll be just basically have like w minus that gradient right and basically maybe add a tiny like step function there like this tiny things here so therefore this this shape and this shape should match these two things actually should match each other they should have the same shape so therefore when, when of course this only holds when we can define gradient gradient is only applied to a scalar function where right? you have a multi variable multiple argument but you only have the function is only scalar right? so then actually uh, uh, an easier thing easier way to think of therefore is just think of this as a uh, cascade of two scalar function here so each of them will have contribution to the final uh, curve, like this parcel Q, parcel W, right? We have this effect to this parcel Q, parcel, or I, what should I say? I mean, the parcel, um, if I have, let's say, uh, maybe I have this L here. Each of them will have contribution to this parcel L, parcel W here. And, uh, this parcel L parcel W eventually just equal to this local derivative multiplied by this parcel L parcel Q1, right? This is like fitting back like this gradient uh, information, but only with respect to one of the input here, Q1 here. And at this parcel Q2 parcel W parcel L parcel Q2, right? So, then if you look at that, okay, uh, this thing is basically have shape of W, just same shape of this guy. This thing is just same same shape as W as well. And each of these item here is now will be scalar because we are looking at scalar and L is just scalar. I mean, eventually the final loss here, we assume is a scalar. So this is just a number. So it will be way the sum of this W here. I mean, W gradient here. So, for example, like, I can, if I continue, like, to compute, let's say, uh, maybe I go more, like, <laughs> okay, it's showing the solution now. If I continue to compute, like, let's say, parcel Q1, parcel W, so then, I f first think of like what is Q, Q1 with respect to W. Q is equal to Q1, Q2, right? And this is equal to W multiplied X, right? Or I can write, write it down, let's say, W11, W12, W21, W22 times X1, X2, right? So if I take partial derivative, of Q1, that's the first term here. Okay, Q1 is what? Q1 is just equal to this multiplied by this way. So it's like W11, W12, 
x1, x2. So it's a scalar. So if I take partial derivative with respect to w, or like an element of w, wij, let's say, so what do I have? I will have, um, if i is not equal to 1, then i will equal to 0, right? Because there's nothing here that's related to w2, or like if I have i equal to 2, then I basically have 0, right? Because I don't have w2 something here. For i equal to 1, I will just have x j away basically right so therefore like taking derivative for this guy is actually just equal to uh, x1 x2 co co right so therefore it's like this term here you see what i have here so this is partial q1 with respect to w and similarly partial q2 with respect to w will be just this way co co is 0 0.2, 0 0.4 here. And so therefore, like, now if I have the, let's say if I continue to go here, if I have a gradient coming back here, this one, like this, 144.52, 0 0.52, how should I fit back this parcel L, parcel W? So this is a like parcel L, parcel Q, eh? So what should be parcel L, parcel W, numerically here? Parcel L over parcel Q times parcel Q over parcel W. Parcel L, parcel Q, parcel L, parcel W. I, 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 I basically, you can see here, this is essentially, this is parcel Q, parcel W. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, and you, you, yeah, you, you account multiply them together, but how? Like, I have this numerical value here. So what was exactly the value supposed to be? I, I have this, again, like this is puzzle Q1, puzzle W, right? This is parcel Q2, parcel W, right? Yes. And this is essentially what? This is like parcel L, parcel Q. It's called parcel L, parcel Q1, and parcel L, parcel Q2, right? So what, what should I do? This is Q1, yeah, this is Q1. Yes, 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 exactly. So I, I should have weighted some of these two guys, right? And these are the ways, the corresponding ways here. Yeah. So uh, you see, like, this is much easier to interpret, but I, I know that like, you, you're not likely to implement that. But for example, if I have x is not 2 by 1, if my x is, say, like, 2 by 2, like, like I have also point 2, point 4 here. So then you see, actually, my output here, now my q have, like, 2 by 2 also, I have 4 elements now, 0 0.22, 0 0.26, oops, 0 0.22, 0 0.26, right? So, what's the size of parcel Q, parcel W now? How many elements do I have? Right. How? Okay. Go back to the. Uh, you can verify using the Jacobian, right? Counting as Jacobian, right? If you vectorize the input, vectorize the output. Vectorizing the input have four elements. Vectorizing the output have four elements. The Jacobian should have size like four by four, right? So therefore, like that should be sixteen elements there. So. 
and um, M. And what will be the next two? So um, then let's say like here, like instead of I have Q1, Q2 here, I'll have let's say Q, I just say like Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, just for sim simple rotation there, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Then I, again, I can for each of that, I, I find the, the gradient, way right, with respect to W, right? I can have like partial derivative of Q1 with respect to W, partial Q2 was back to, to W, and then I also have like partial Q3 with respect to W. I can have four terms here. Partial Q4. Hey, Tosa, you, you have some question? Hello? Oh, wait a sec. Maybe I, my volume is up. Uh, so Tosa, are you guys okay? Like I, I can't exactly hear if you're asking a question or something. Yeah. I'm sorry, Professor. Uh, somebody yes. was speaking and my mic was on, not on mute. Oh no, 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 no problem. Yes, well, I just okay. wonder if you have a, yeah. any questions. I, I'm really sorry. I will. Oh no, 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 don't worry about that. So um. Uh, let's see. So yes, so we we are talking about that. We have like Q three and Q four also. Eh? So I assume the values is just like that. What what will be like Q three and Q four? Like this partial Q three with respect to W. So okay, basically, if I have the same zero point two zero point four, of course, I, my output here will be identical. Eh? It's also zero point two two. So so I mean like the Q. Now it's like four by four will be like this, right? Yes, because I if I if I change x okay if I change x to two by two, and let's say my input is like this one, yeah, then my q will be two by two also, right? Because both w and x is two by two, right? Yeah. But you just said like four by four, so that's. Oh wait wait. What I say four by four is like if you factorize this thing. Think of like you you ch the Jacobian. Remember, like when you have the Jacobian matrix, uh, typically we will factorize that way. Think of because there's a number of input is so much, number of output is so much. Then you, the Jacobian matrix is like let's say this is x, uh, x one up to x n here. This is x, uh, y one up to y m here. Then the Jacobian matrix is partial something x1 partial uh, y1. Oh, sorry, it should be y1 over x1. Right? Partial y1, partial x1, and then blah, 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 up to partial y1, partial xn. I'm not sure. I, I, maybe I should put a transpose, but it is, it's not too important. So and partial yn, partial x1, and so on, right? So therefore, in any sense, like this would be a m by m matrix, right? Yeah. yeah. So, but my input here is like, like a matrix here. So that therefore, like, uh, uh, this is the, the beauty of like interpret it this way, because like, you, um, it, it will be a little bit complicated when you vectorize that. You, you need to make sure the dimension is like, fitting right. But if you always are like, taking one output at a time and and look at like just a sing single output, then you look at the gradient, then the BP step is essentially just weigh the sum of those gradient, right? And each of the gradient is actually have the same shape as the input. Uh, so may maybe if I continue this example, if I change it to, to this one like that, uh, to two by two, then my Q is also two by two like this. Then basically, 
I guess I Q1, Q2 is this guy, right? Then parcel Q3, parcel W, um, okay, Q3 is what? Q3, Yeah, Q3 is equal to, uh, I, I have, I, I'm cut all space now. Let me see if I, I'm thinking if I want to use the legs size or not. Maybe I'll just use a eraser. Let's see, Q3 is um, Q3 is this guy here, Q3 is the value is Q3 is this multiplied by this and this multiplied by this way. So it's like, um, actually now it's, uh, I, I have, uh, I, let me call this X1, X2 again. This is like maybe X3, X4. So I have basically Q3, actually, maybe I will just write it out. Like Q3 should be just, um, I mean, parcel Q3, parcel W should be just equal to X3, X4, CO, CO. You can verify that, right? very similar to as P4. And then like Q, Q4, parcel Q4, parcel W is equal to uh, CO, CO, X3, X4, okay. So therefore, like you have this next two matrices is essentially the same as these two here. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, I, I, I won't write it anymore. Like it's too messy. So this one is the same as this guy here. This one is the same as this guy here. Okay. But now, so again, I, now I have this um, local gra gradient information here. And I have the gradient information from earlier node passing to this node here. So from previous node pass back, let's say, now because I my him, here Q, I have four elements, right? What's passing back also should have four elements, right? So let's say I also have something like that. Maybe the four elements are 0 0.44, 0 0.52, 0 0.44, 0 0.52. Now, how should I pass back this gradient? to here, or like, how do I, again, I find puzzle L, puzzle W. Hmm. Okay. It, it should be still way to some way. So, but like, like wait a sum, I have four four of these gradient matrices here. So I will be this one multiplied by this one and plus this one multiplied by this second one and this matrix multiplied by this one and this multiplied by this one and and then we'll get the parcel L parcel W. So um. I guess maybe it looks ugly. So, but in summary, what I want to say is, I, uh, I, I, if I consider the output as a separate elements, so separate instead of like a vector or a matrix or even like high dimensional uh, objects, I all, always take the elements at a time to look at. Then, um, the. The um the back propagated uh, gradient information will be just weighted sum of each of these gradient in gradient uh, local gradient with respect to each of the output and weighted by the gradient information that like passing back from a uh, later node. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, I, I explain clearly. So, anyway, any questions? I so.
uh, maybe I give one remark here. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll use that. You see, like, when we have this linear uh, operation, like this W multiplied by x, this is very common, right, in lin uh, li uh, little network. And uh, you see, like, when I pass back this gradient information, uh, the gradient is just, I have an x somewhere, right? It's that, that is basically uh, like this. I can see an x here, or x transpose here, and another x transpose here. So know that, like, if my x input here is zero, then there's no output there, and also, like, um, there's no gradient coming back, or, like, the gradient will be zero. When the input is zero, then, then um, apparently this x will be zero. Eh? I mean, if x is zero here, then, then this local duality will be zero. And then if you have, like, further later on, if you have, like, gradient information, like, from far away, I mean, the next node passing back, I'm trying to multiply by this guy here. As I mentioned, it will be just weight the sum of this gradient here. Um, if this input is zero, then all of these gradient matrices will all be zero. Uh, but very intuitively, uh, very intuitive, right? So if your input is zero, basically you chop off the information flow. So if you have no input, there's no gradient coming back. Uh, it, it, it should be obvious, but uh, you will see like what we will discuss next, I'm not sure today, that we will use this, basically. Uh, so, I guess, uh, I don't know, I, I guess maybe it's hard. Uh, it seems that maybe it's easier to, it's like, it's like easier to understand when I write as a one equation at a time or something like that. I, I feel that you guys are kind of confused today. So let, let me look at one more example, let's say. Uh, so let's consider like softmax. And then like you have cost entropy loss. So this is typical in classifier, right? So I essentially I have some new lateral layer or whatever classifier or anything that eventually generate me some outputs here. Let, let me call this output O1 up to, let's say, ON. And then I just go for a softmax. Uh, I don't know how. Maybe I, I should just white like this. Uh, how do I, what's a better way to white it? Maybe I, I like write this. So this is a softmax. So let's say this is like some, some classifier or whatever that eventually get me some O1, O2, some value up to ON here. Then using the softmax, I will kind of normalize that into some kind of probability, like right? let's say P1 up to PN here. Now, then I have cost entropy loss, so this combined will get me a loss function, let me call it L here. So let's say, okay, I, I just see if you guys remember. So let's say if my ground truth here, uh, turns out the object should be classified as object i. So what should be qi? What's, what should be q, as you, as you ask? Oh, I shouldn't say q. I, I should say, what should be the cross entropy loss? So if ground truth is I, yeah, I guess it is hard for you to remember this, but so anyway, like, um, yeah, but it, it's good to remember that, honestly. So you have, um, so if the, basically, like, what you're, Computing for cost entropy, as we mentioned, is really computing KL divergence between a ground truth distribution and also the distribution from the distribution from your classifier. So your ground truth distribution in this case will be just I have the i element. Let let me call the distribution Q. So I have Q one, 
uh, everything is equal to zero except the i element q i is equal to one. So the rest is equal to zero up to q n. So we have basically a distribution with also like n elements there, and then q i is equal to one, and the rest equal to zero. And then uh, the cost entropy is like yeah, I don't write the KL divergence, but if like it's essentially say the KL divergence of Q and P, and that that you, if you write it out, is actually you give you something like Q log P J sum over J. Then of course, I you only have the i element is equal to zero. You can you can uh, you can either write this way or like you can just write. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe I will keep keep this format here, in case if I I have the ground truth here, I can be more flexible. Let's say if my ground truth also probabilistic, I I have some beliefs that like maybe uh, the outcome is kind of confusing. Uh, this can either be considered as like uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, e even you are not sure it's a cat or dog or I, I, that's. Where, but like maybe that's are some example like you, the class is not so clear. Maybe if this is like the class is more fine grain, for example, like a precise species. No, I shouldn't say species, but uh, what's that word for special types of cats or dogs? Maybe it's not so sure like the exact type, exact type. So then. If I keep that, uh, so this is the cost entropy, right? This is the cost entropy loss there. So L is just equal to that. And for softmax, of course, softmax is just PI will be equal to something like exponential OI over sum over exponential OJ. So sum over J. Oh, my thing is horrible. Like that. So uh, now the question. Let's let's see. Let's let's look at like what will be puzzle L puzzle. Let's say O O I something like that. What what will we pass it back? So you can like pass one at a time. Right? So you I can look at what's puzzle L puzzle P I something like that. That one should be just equal to. It is just one term here, so this is a sum, but only j equal to i is non-zero, so it's just q j over p, sorry, q i over p i. Right. And then I um, ah, let's see. Then locally, if I look at the local gradient here, so this is like a Jacobian matrix also, right? I actually, the, okay, I keep asking this, but what's the size of the Jacobian matrix? How many elements inside here? Uh, n square, right? N by n, n input, n output, yeah. So, and um, e each of them is just like have value is essentially puzzle p, for example, the uh, jk element will be puzzle pj, puzzle ok, right? And uh, so if you look, I look at this one, basically there's two cases here. If I assume j and k are not equal, uh, then uh this is kind of okay that that uh that is p i here maybe i i went uh, it's okay puzzle uh, maybe maybe p i p j maybe it's easier puzzle p i over uh, puzzle o j uh then uh this okay this is j again so it's okay yeah it's okay so uh Above doesn't depend on OJ, so it's just a constant. So below will be just uh, the whole thing. This is like something like similar to 1 over x, right? So the derivative of 1 over x will be 1 over x squared, right? So I have this square. Right? 
squared actually minus 1 over x squared so I have minus sign here and then uh, of course I for this x is actually the whole sum here I need to take the partial derivative of that uh, of oj with respect oh sorry uh, this sum with respect to oj that will be just exponential oj right? so then this I can regroup that together you see like I basically have like exponential oi over this sum here that's give me just pi right and then I have also exponential oj over this sum again because I have square here so therefore this is just minus pi and pj now if I have let's say i is equal to j let's say pi uh, partial oi then it's essentially very similar to this one but I always also have one more term is pi right because I can take derivative of this guy also now this depends on oi so I, I essentially will have pi minus pi pj right so uh, yeah uh, pi 1 minus pj huh? and um, oh yeah okay okay but of course i is equal to j here so it's just actually pi 1 minus pi and 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 then let's see. I want to find this with respect to this way. Oh, okay. I'm looking for this. Puzzle L, puzzle O I. So then it will be like a. Maybe I. Wait, this again. Puzzle L, puzzle O I. Let's say the I one. So it it will go for each of these guys here, right? It's essentially it will be sum over let's see I better follow my okay sum over j let's say and parcel l parcel pj and then parcel pj parcel oi right and uh, I I so it depends on whether i equal to j i have two different cases here so i can split that so let's say parcel l parcel pi parcel pi parcel oi plus uh, j not equal to i parcel l parcel pj parcel pj parcel oi and parcel l parcel pi is just q over qi over pi qi over pi let's see here and parcel pi parcel oi is this guy is pi 1 minus pi then this is like j not equal to i parcel l parcel pj is like qj over pj and parcel pj parcel oi is this guy but the j and i flip but anyway it's the same it's the matrix plus of pi plus of pj so if j cancel here let's see something like this and i have pi cancel here also and uh if you look at this here uh i'm some something over okay pi is it I'm similar for J, right? So this does not depend on J. I can put it out actually. This I'm sum over QJ, all of them except the i element, right? So therefore, this sum is actually equal to one minus QI. So one minus QI times PI minus PI. QI one minus PI. And then I should get things cancelled. I have minus here, minus here, the PIQ I get cancelled here. So basically I just have Q, uh, QI minus PI. So I. Uh, 
So if you think of that, the, the entire interpretation it makes lots of sense, right? If if you look at okay, what's the slope there? It is for for the loss with respect to the output here. It's just like what is soft mass probability like difference from your ground truth there. So it, it's just the difference there. So. Uh, Okay, I guess um so so uh, I guess this is all pretty simple. So um I guess one last example I just show it here quickly. Uh this is an example that uh if we have like some image processing or like computer vision task, it's very common that if you do segmentation uh, let's say I have some object here. I'm going to segment an object. Let's say uh, I want to find uh, a person and want to segment that out. And let's say this segment is object. This is this give me a mask way. Right? And let's say I have a classifier, basically some some kind of classifier. And for each of the pixel, like this pixel index, I call it V here. I don't know why I use V. Like for pixel V here. I will have a value uh, xv basically saying whether uh, that is belong to a person or not. For example, like uh, inside here, I better have a larger xv, like xv closer to one. So outside here, I probably want to have xv is, uh, closer to zero. So you can see what I mean. And then I also have a ground truth here. It's like, uh, of course, this is like output from the classifier, but I have some so some ground truth and have another mask, maybe like I don't know, a bit more you know, maybe use another color. Uh, so maybe a finer uh, or something like this is like another kind of uh, this is the ground truth let's say. And uh, and then the ground truth I, I have like another mask. So I call it like V Y V here. But also be because it's ground truth, right? We are kind of certain here. In this case, we assume that like we know for sure, like inside here, like it would be one. So we are very certain this is like should be inside a people, inside a person, and outside will be just zero. So here for the setup here. So then like we can define loss to try to. Uh, Evaluate whether like our approximation, the, our estimated curve segmentation is good or not. So, and uh, it's very typical to use this so-called IOU. So it's the intersection over the union. So basically, you have you think of like this is like two sides, right? So the pixel, like for the black one, okay, maybe keep the the red one we had earlier is like the ground truth there, and then like the back one. Mm. is my estimate here and I can do an intersection of them so let's say this this is my intersection uh, kind of like that I guess I'm not sure that you can see that okay so this is the intersection right and the union will be the bigger one right the union will be will be the entire so union will be like this here so if our segmentation is perfect then the intersection union will be the same right so therefore the intersection over union should be equal to one so therefore you can use it as a loss, loss function and the key there is that we can approximate this intersection union with the intersection approximate like this so it's just a port here um, uh, for each of this value there and then we can approximate union like this so if we take this approximation then in the solution for union just say like this guy over this guy then this will be defensible we can compute the gradient uh, compute the derivative then eventually we will have the derivative is just like this then you can split into two cases if it's uh, in the ground truth pixel, then the score or the, the gradient that uh, 
passing back will be one over u x, the local gradient, and then like if that fact that pixel is not uh, it's not a person, then it will be like i is over u x square. So, okay, I guess I, I have enough example for like bad pop. So, uh, any questions? I I guess I uh, by this time should be pretty, uh, hopefully like clear. Um, so, um, and if you remember, like in actual implementation, what we do, like we we go back to one of these. In actual implementation, oh, maybe this is not even good. Maybe actually. Actually, this one is is not bad, but it's now it's too hard to see. Um, so in actual implementation, you give an input. Remember, like for each of the computational node, you compute the output and at the same time compute the local uh, derivative, right? And then you basically you store that, and then you move on to the next node again. You compute the output and compute the local derivative. And at the very end, when you come back. You pass back a one, and then like the one will multiply by the local derivative, and then continue to multiply local derivative, and so on, and go back right. So now, if we already asked many many times, so if you have, uh, you 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 if you have like n input and n output, a for a particle operation. Then the Jacobian matrix should be n by n, right? You have, we have n square, and that that essentially means that we have n square number of local derivative there need to be stored, and and this is like you need to store it during for so therefore like I, I'm not sure the um current implementation, but if you I'm not sure they they kind of like get around that anymore, but uh, it's very common that like if you check the memory. Of doing a bad pop chain, and you will see the memory just go up and down, up and down. Because like doing forward, like you compute all the uh, output, but at the same time, like the most expensive or like in terms of space will be the local derivative. Because if you have, when you have n input and outputs, that nodes will have like n square elements there to store, and you you have to store it, uh, or like you need to recompute that. Like you store it. Oh, I'm compute one uh, all the way up until the end, and only when you do the back propagation, like when you propagate back the gradient, then you kind of consume that now. Each time you kind of compute the local derivative multiplied by that gradient feedback from the later node, you can erase your current local derivative right, and continue to do that. So, uh, and. Um, this this is what what I just mentioned. Like forward, you compute all these output and local derivatives, and then when you backward, you can't consume this local derivative back, so you pull back from the memory. So therefore, you see the memory spike basically. Um, and uh, so that that's that's all I want to talk about for back pop. Uh, any questions? Um, it is something very simple, honestly, but. Um, uh, Yeah, especially like if you you think of that as I mentioned, like uh, just in terms of um, um, when you have multiple output, just think of like you each of the output as a scalar one scalar output, and look at the gradient for that with respect to that scalar output uh, uh, locally. Then that part is just really weigh the sum of all this like, gradient. Um, okay, I I guess I briefly mentioned some activation function, but honestly, that's not much to say about activation function. Uh, to be honest, most people just use uh, Valut. <laughs> so uh, so if we talk a little bit history, then of course like, people start with like step function like that won't work right, because you don't know how to train is yeah. It's not differentiable. It give, doesn't give you any slope. In, in in terms of like using bad pop, then that's essentially there's no 
um, low gradient information at all, if you have step function, it's everywhere the gradient is equal to zero, either undefined or equal to zero. There's nothing, you agree with that? Right. So because uh, you're, you remember that like, you need to pass the gradient information for those local, t, um, for this local operator here, right? let's say I have a step function here, my gradient information will multiply by this local gradient or local derivative of this output with respect to this input. If you have a step function, either it's equal to zero, the slope, or either it's like undefined. So therefore, like, that's the way you can just basically the information will stop here. So that probably is useless there. So then like people, okay, let, let's move that out, then think of sigmoid. And of course, like, the reason that you step function and so on just want to imitate uh, the biological neurons, right? So then sigma seems to be a reasonable choice and used for a long time. And then later on, people find that it's kind of stupid, like you just artificially make all the, everything is non zero mean. So um, it then essentially you get bigger and bigger, right? The signal, it doesn't make sense. So let, let's make it zero mean everywhere. So then, then people think of 10H. Um, and somehow later on, like, uh, for still people, I don't think, um, I don't know, need to check, probably have some theoretical paper, but I didn't really dig into that. Uh, but I listened to one talk, like, um, not talk, but one a conversation of, uh, I forgot whether Andrew Ng with uh, um, uh, Yosha Banjo. So Banjo was interviewed by either Andrew Ng or Les Freeman, I forgot. But he, he said that like, he was very suspicious of Wailut at that time. <laughs> he kept asking students, are you sure that your result is correct? Like, it seems too good or something like that. Like, it's just not true. Like, he thinks that like, it's not differentiable or like it does, yeah. Uh, so, but it turns out it, it's still like one of the best out there. Like, so Wailut is one of the best. Um, and then, um, Later on, we have like some some newer one like beside Wailut, uh That's uh, let's see, for example, liquid Wailut, That's like people introduce this liquid Wailut, It's just like have a shape like this. Like you just so the the idea is like um, it seems that I wa wasted like when you have like inputs is negative, because when your input is negative, you didn't pass anything to the output, right? If you don't have anything passed to the output, then there's also nothing, no gradient information can pass back also. Because if you, at this range, your local gradient is zero, eh? local derivative is zero. So whatever passing back will multiply by zero, then your bad part will stop there. So if you have gradient want to pass back that, that part will stop. Um, so people think, of, okay, maybe I, I lead, let it leak something, maybe better. So it's a liquid wallet. Um I don't know how good is that, honestly, because I, I, I don't see lots of recent paper. I, I mean, maybe maybe they do, but I, I, I don't know. And also there's a ELU like this. I, uh, basically, uh, the argument is I, I, I want to have, again, make it still mean, right? So therefore, like, it just um, offset that, like, you have the minimum, like, somewhere here, yeah equal to minus one, and then uh, kind of they smooth it out a little bit like this. And uh, so this is the ELU. Uh, and Goodfellow himself had introduced something like this called, like, uh, what's that? Methyl Lewons. It's like combine this uh, value and liquid value. So it's like, um, just have an expression like that. You, 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 you have, uh, Basically, you you have like this is like two. Essentially, is two. Uh, let me how I should draw it. So it's something like in general. Okay, maybe I don't in general, but it's something like two lines here, right? So, so in 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 a sense, it's very similar to a liquid loop because I 
if I have two lines here, one of this is like, let's say this is W1 here, this is W2 here, one line here, the other line here, you take the maximum, you have a uh, have a shape side this way. So it's like very much like uh, uh, liquid value. Uh, so, but the problem is say like, uh, it has like two times the number of parameters here. And I guess maybe that's the reason I, I, I don't think it's uh, used much. Um, but I don't know, but honestly, I guess uh, also maybe it's possible that like many people like just get a problem, start working on that and use Wordloot and just working great, then, then they stop there. There's no reason to compare with all these uh, different activation functions. Um, by, by the way, like, but on, uh, by the, I, I should mention also one more, actually I, it's not in my notes, but uh, I came across that like reviewing a paper like, recently so this is a called Gaussian error linear unit. So I don't know how people call it Galut or like I don't know how they pronounce that. So um, uh, it, it it's a very short paper, but very nice paper. I didn't really read it carefully. So uh, it uh, basically if you you have something like that, you put, submit to a journal. Uh, you have a sometimes you have works like you. Kind of like at A and B and C and D, you need to argue a lot that why this is worth doing and stuff like that. But when you have s stuff like that, they just have some theoretical argument. I guess it's pretty short. I, I didn't really completely understand that. I guess I need to spend time on that. Maybe I'll come back to that later. Uh, but they, they, they introduced the Galut is like, like have a shape like this, basically. Um, and this is kind of very similar to Wallut. Um and they have some theoretical argument for that. It's, uh, I, I won't go into detail now, but the shape is like that. And then they compare with some, uh, for different different problem and compare with like ELU and Wellut and it's working better. Uh, so uh, stuff like that is just, uh, it's very hard for reveal to reject. So, um, so therefore like if you, uh, if you work on a project where it doesn't work well, maybe you, you may try this as well. I think this is uh, especially popular in uh, um, NLP, like people, uh, NLP problem, they sometimes use this Galoot. So let's see, let me, uh, Okay, maybe maybe also so a few works worse 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 for um, pre-processing. So again, like, it doesn't have much to say because uh, it seems like, like it used to be um, in classic cell processing. It's always pretty nice to uh, to kind of center the data and normalize the data. Um, but it looks like that, like it's less, uh, at least for normalization, the data. So normalization in, in, in the sense that like, for example, I have a skill data here. If I want to make the, each of the dimension have like similar variance, that kind of normalization. Of course I can even further like in classic cell processing, I may uh, maybe decode like the data, especially for compression. Like, Decorate in the sense I will just kind of like rotate the data somehow find a different axis. If I rotate the data, the data will just become become like that. And and for example, um, um, yeah, this this will be actually essentially you think of PCA is essentially doing that. Uh, you after you rotating that, then you can discuss some of the dimension, something like that. What what, what is the Where? Here? Okay, it's just, it's the standard duration. Yeah. So it's just scale the standard duration. So along the axis, you just, so, um, and, uh, so classic scale processing, you probably will go up to here, something like that. Uh, honestly, like, I'm not completely up update. So I'm not sure this keep changing. Like, a couple of years ago, like, I think, like, um, Mm. 
the uh, the belief is that like we don't need those anymore. I guess it's probably still hold true. Like if you have a new problem, you probably don't need to worry too much about pre processing. You, uh, the for example for image processing, oftentimes like we just do the centering. So you have an image, you just subtract the mean, and then you start working with that. And then um, yeah, something like that. So. I'm not sure whether I should continue or like uh, let's see. Okay, maybe I continue a little bit then I, I, I uh then I stop and then we continue again next time. So um Okay, we talk about Batpop. Batpop was introduced like, in the eighties, right? At least I if during eighties is well long. So it's not because of bad pop deep 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 lateral work. Um, so you can imagine that like, if if bad pop is sufficient, then like, we should have deep learning like in in early nineties. I mean, at, I mean later say uh, late nineties, right? So it, it's not sufficient. It's not enough to have um, just bad pop alone to 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 train a deep neural network. So it will work if you have just one, two layer, two, three layers, but if you have more and more layers, uh, it just doesn't work very well. The story is there is like, actually for one time, for some time, say in 2006 or something, people, I'm not sure I will go into that. Um, people also try to do deep neural network, but they do, um, they use a pretty different method. They use unsupervised learning for training. So basically, they they when you have like like many many layers, what they're going to do is like they consider two or three layers at a time and do some unsupervised learning to as uh, p-training of the weight. So instead of your weight just arbitrary, you take couple like couple layers, you p-train the weight. And you start from those way and then train again. And then later on, I, uh, I guess I around maybe 2000, I don't know, 12 or like even earlier than that, like people realize that there's some other trick. For example, they like weight initialization. I'm not sure it's a trick. It's like people in the past didn't think carefully about weight initialization. And uh, of course, like, you can think of like uh, most natural things that like, uh, someone will propose like when you first have problem like this, will, okay, I have uh, lateral with many parameters. Okay, let's just randomize the weight, right? And maybe I, I just set the weight to some, uh, have a normal distribution with zero mean and like, 0 0.01 or something like that. It's very lateral. Eh? So, and I guess like, people didn't think enough and they they think this is sufficient. Then uh, it turns out like this This is a, I guess it's one of the major reasons why like deep neural network, at least uh, up to maybe 10 layers, like, it used to be not working at all. But if you have like more careful weight initialization, suddenly like it works. So, um, so as I mentioned, like the first idea, like people always comes off like how do I do weight initialization? Just randomize that way. I just uh, get some random numbers there, and and it turns out the problem, as you can see, like this is a very good example. I just uh, borrowed from Kapafi, and uh, and he basically have like this is a kind of like uh, toy networks with 10 layers here, and each layer has like 500 new ones here. And the activation function is just use 10 H here. And uh, then I just randomize. I say if I randomize with like a Gaussian distribution with the standard deviation is 0 0.01, then what, what we have is something like this. So after we initialization, uh, we want to see like, the 
the value of the hidden layers. So basically, we have some in, some random input sent to the network. So we just pop into like uh, each of the layer and see the values of the output. And you can see that like after a while, it will become all sealed. So apparently, the way to start big enough and seal is not good so why why seal is not good you remember we just said that so when when we have this is your multiplying uh, by the weights yeah the yeah that that is gone like the parcel l parcel w will be equal to seal essentially yeah so therefore like so and and then now, uh, okay, since it's too small, it looks like it's too small, then like, let, let's make it bigger. So we try to make it bigger instead of point zero one, we make it one, then, then now it goes the other way around. So it's, it just go to extreme like this. So it's all saturated, 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 saturated. Uh, again, it, it will have problem, like why, why it will have problem? So in that case, maybe it's not as obvious so the the problem is now not uh, the operator like w multiplied by x, but it's the activation function the tan h there, because for tan h uh, have a shape like this right when you're saturated you are at this region here, and at this region that like, essentially the gradient again is zero, so therefore like now it's not here breaking the gradient flow, it's here now it's breaking the gradient flow if you're saturating, so again your Gradient information cannot pass back to the earlier layer. So either way, like you cannot train because like, if your gradient information cannot effectively pass back to earlier layer, then uh, basically like these earlier layer ones cannot. You have gradient always equal to zero. Right? It just won't move. So uh, therefore, it just doesn't work. So okay, I guess I will stop here. Like any question. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, next time we'll talk about like what, what's the right way to do it. So the actual method is changing this. It's just like keep doing it and it shall be value of the name. So oh, which one is that? Maybe one more. Oh, you mean how to do it? Uh, yeah, like how, how do we do this? No, it's more, more, it's, uh, it's more careful than that. Like it's actually, it's, like, it's, pre it's pretty nice. Actually, it's not difficult, but it's pretty nice. They have a, a nice theoretical argument there. So that, that's, that's another thing that if you propose something that have a nice theoretical argument, and at the same time, it's actually show its work, then you know you, you, you fish something really good. I fish something back. So, anyway, I guess I really we will just stop. Yeah. Can I ask you a question about the homework?